300 years, the most powerful nations on earth grew richer and stronger on the profits of the slave trade. Over 12 million men, women and children were forcibly transported from Africa on slave ships like this to the colonies and plantations in North and South America. Today, slavery is illegal in every country on the planet. But the truth is slavery did not die in the 19th century. It is alive, it is thriving, and it is bigger than ever. This series investigates the very modern evil of 21st century slavery. From the smallest villages in Asia to some of the most economically vibrant cities in the West. But it begins in the last place you'd expect to find slaves. A country which only a few generations ago tore itself apart to outlaw slavery. A country still racked by collective guilt over its role in the transatlantic trade. The United States probably has between 40 and 50,000 slaves measured conservatively. But I think also to be fair, the United States is one of the governments that has been most honest about the extent, the amount, and, and the precise crime of enslavement within the United States. 150 years ago, if you walked around the heart of the US Capitol, you could have bought a slave off a street corner. And this country had to go through a painful civil war in order to bring slavery to an end. And in the 21st century, there's no doubt that the United States is leading the way in the fight against modern slavery. And as testament to that, this country is planning to prosecute the largest ever case against modern slavery. Waikiki, Honolulu, America's playground and a name synonymous with glamour and carefree vacations. But behind the glamour, a secret hidden in plain sight. Slaves toiling in Hawaii's fertile soil to produce the food the rest of the world puts on its tables. There is a strong possibility that the very fruit, the very vegetable, the very egg <laughs> that you're eating could have been brought to your table by an enslaved individual right here in the land of the free. In the remote northern provinces of Thailand, life has continued unchanged for centuries. Close-knit families eke out a subsistence living by working ancestral lands and rice fields. And it was here in 2003 that agents for an American farm worker recruitment company came calling. <laughs> Families in Lampang earn less than $1,000 a year. The recruiters told them that in America, they would earn $50,000 in three years. There was just one catch they had to pay illegally high registration fees to the recruiters, up front and in cash. 
the recruitment fees were high. Um, they were generally between 500 and 750,000 Thai baht, or between 15 and 20,000 US dollars. But for three years of, um, they believed, guaranteed work, and the contract did say three years employment, at a rate of eight or nine dollars an hour. So when the guys did the math, they figured that they could pay off their debt in the first year, and then the second and third years would basically be profit for their families. <laughs> That decision, which would be made by more than 1,000 men like Arshun and Desha in this impoverished corner of Thailand, was the start of a journey that began with the dream of a future, but would end in slavery. This is where 44 of those men were sent, Aloon Farms on Honolulu, a key supplier of fruits and vegetables to major world food brands. But very quickly, Aloon's new Thai recruits found the dream they had been sold turned into a nightmare. The problems really started early on for the guys. Their passports were taken um, shortly upon arrival. They did not have enough food um, many times. They were um, given uh, moldy bread, uh, if anything at all, and coffee. And, and oftentimes they didn't have um, probably most mornings they didn't have enough to eat before going out and starting their toiling in the in the very hot sun uh, on the Eva Plains, which is where Loon Farms is, is located. But there was worse to come. And then the promised pay started to dry up. They weren't given um, the amount of work, the amount of hours per week that was promised. And they very quickly started to see, again, calculating the math in their heads, that they weren't going to be able to pay the interest on the debt, much less to start paying down the debt. Without money and isolated on Aloon Farm's remote fields, the Thai workers found themselves trapped. <laughs> มีแต่จะเป็นภาระหนักขึ้นไปเพราะว่าสถานการณ์ทางบ้านนี่คือฝากไว้กับกับพวกกับพวกผมทุกคนเลยนะครับเพราะว่าตอนนั้นมันใจ
abuse and harm and even death. Here the threat wasn't so much physical. Um, the threat, the, the fear for the victims was um, complete destitution and loss for their family. Again, they would lose everything and that kept them, that kept them in that condition. The Sioux also agreed to pay each of their victims $8,000 compensation, enough to enable them to go home to Thailand. But what happened next would dash even that dream. On Honolulu, many of those victims had waited years to see the case come to court. But this summer, and despite the Sioux brothers' previous guilty pleas, the Aloon prosecution was dismissed on a legal technicality. It left the Thai workers without their promised money and completely devastated. <laughs> คือพูดก็พูดคือต่ําที่สุดก็คือเขาจะจะจิกหัวใจคือไม่ต้องทานข้าวต้องต้องไม่ทานข้าวคือสั่งไม่ให้ทานก็คือไม่ทานสั่ง
จะไม่มีไฟฟ้าให้ใช้ไม่มีไฟช้าแล้วเขาจะไม่มีโทรศัพท์ให้ใช้ไม่มีทีวีให้ใช้คือข้ามาก็แค่มีโคมไฟเล็กๆให้เราอยู่ตอนตีห้าทางโกลบอลจะมารับออกไปทำงาน This is the man who owned and operated Global Horizons Incorporated, an Israeli businessman called Mordechai Moti Orion. Mr. Orion's extensive business dealings in the United States brought him wealth and a home in the hills above Los Angeles. But both Mr. Orion and Global have a long and checkered history. There are many actions uh, filed against uh, Mr. Orion now. U.S. Federal Department of Labor charges uh, against him um, for uh, back wages and penalties. Um, and then there are liens on his properties uh, by the um, IRS, the Internal Revenue Service of the federal government because of unpaid taxes. There's also um, immigration violations. In 2007, individual Thai workers began arriving at the Thai Community Development Center in Los Angeles. Each told a story of having to escape from what they called slavery. They came as far up north as Pacific Northwest, state of Washington, Oregon, and then Nevada, and the desert states, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and going south, Texas, Louisiana, Florida. These are the states right. where they escaped from, all the farms they were on. South Carolina, all the way up Virginia, the east coast. all the way up to East Coast, and then, of course, Hawaii, all the different islands of Hawaii. But it covers the entire country, where the farms were Absolutely. and where the, exactly. the former slaves were able to sort of run away from. That's right. Thanet was one of those who escaped. The first day I got out of the global company was the day I was a manager who was a manager to help everyone to get out of the house. And that day, I saw the house of the house of the house. ผมก็เลยแกล้งบอกว่าผมปวดท้องมากผมก็เลยแอบเอาขโมยเอาพันสปอร์ตของผมเพื่อต้องการที่จะหนีออกจากบริษัทโกลบอล But escaping from slavery has not made him free ตอนนี้ตั้งแต่วันที่ผมออกจากบริษัทโกลบอลมาได้เนี่ยผมไม่มีวีซ่าหรือไม่มีเอกสารใดๆที่ถูกต้องตามกฎหมายเพราะแต่ผมต้องหลบๆซ่อนๆทำงานตามร้านอาหารใช่ครับที่ผมต้องทนอยู่ทุกวันนี้เพราะว่าต้องการเงินไปใส่ที่นากับที่บ้านเพื่อให้ภรรยาของผมกับลูกพ่อแม่จะได้อยู่โดยที่ไม่ต้องไปเช่าเขาอยู่ทุกวันนี้ผมต้องจ่ายหนี้สินอยู่ตลอดเพราะผมกู้เงินมาทั้งหมด6แสนบาทเพื่อมาจ่ายให้บริษัทโกลบอลตอนนี้หนี้สินผมยังไม่หมดเพราะผมจ่ายทั้งดอก100บาทผมจ่ายร้อยละห้า In September 2010, the FBI and Justice Department charged Mordecai Orion and his key lieutenants in Global Horizons with multiple counts of human trafficking. The indictment alleges that Global Horizons knew about the illegal recruitment fees and took a cut of them, held hundreds of Thai workers as forced labor on farms across the United States, confiscated their passports, and deployed armed guards to prevent them from leaving. This is by far the most significant case in US history of um, anti-human trafficking and anti-modern day slavery because it will now become the largest case of human trafficking in US history because of the sheer number of victims involved. Mr. Orion's trial is not due to start until February 2012. But after months of negotiation, he agreed to meet us in a California hotel room. He now claims he is the victim of a plot by the Justice Department to cover up flaws in the regulations covering migrant workers coming to America. So now there is a problem. Let's take this guy, this little Jew, Israeli, whatever he come from. Let's blame him for everything that we hate and make it the biggest human trafficking in America. But you can say human trafficking about anything, in fact. If, if that's the philosophy of human trafficking, 
So everything is human trafficking. Going on airplane from Hawaii to LA is human trafficking. So all the airlines are in human trafficking business. Because who traffic my workers from island to island? Hawaiian airline. With regard to the registration fees, the government alleges that some of these were as high as 21,000 US dollars. I think it's uh, totally wrong what you said because I don't believe that they pay this kind of amount of money. I think it's fiction. If I'm a Thai guy, and just let's go reverse now, and somebody told me that I'm going to have a job in another country, and by the way, this has happened for every country around the world, and I'm really eager to go there, okay? I'll do anything I can to make it happen. And I'll, I'll go to extreme because I'm Jewish. The people in the Holocaust done anything they can to save their life. You know how many American people today would be happy to get $10 an hour net in their pocket and have somebody pay for them housing, transportation, take them to work every day? Or oh, I'll take my grandma to shopping once a week. Is that what you call human trafficking? In February of 2011, one of Mordechai Orion's most senior lieutenants decided to enter into a plea bargain with the US Justice Department and agreed to turn evidence against his former ally. Mr. Bruce Schwartz said that he knowingly conspired to enslave Thai workers with the full knowledge of Mr. Orion and other members of Global Horizons, that together they on purpose withheld the passports of the Thai workers, thus making it impossible for them to escape. And they also knowingly used the huge amount of debts that the Thai workers had entered into as a way of enforcing the Thai workers to remain in Global Horizons employment. After everything that you have had to face uh, and your co-defendants, you personally, do you have any regrets? I believe, if I was myself, I would not regret on anything. I'll fight it to Senel because I think what I've done was a great thing. I changed people's life. I think the pain of what my family went through and my kids, it was a little, uh, if I can call it, a little holocaust for my family. In that, if nothing else, Mr. Orion and his alleged victims have something in common. ช่วยดูแลในจุดนี้ด้วยสําหรับคนAcross the United States, many of the victims of Global Horizons are pinning their hopes on the trial of Moti Orion. But the collapse of the Alun Farms prosecution has dented their faith in the US legal system. Does the American government do enough to end slavery within its borders? Absolutely not. Uh, it needs to spend a billion a year, perhaps, to really wipe it out. It spends maybe 100 to 150 million, and that barely scratches the surface. And the, the, the thing that's heartbreaking about that fact is that the United States could be a slave-free country. Today, hundreds of the Thai slaves who were victims of Alun Farms and Global Horizons remain trapped in the United States. Unable to return home because of their debts and separated from the families whom they had tried to support. In the next episode of Slavery, a 21st century evil, the women trapped in sex slavery and the men who trafficked them exposed.